Okay, I'm going to read Matthew 23, verse 27 to 28. And it says, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. In the same way, you, on the same way, on the outside you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. And that's Jesus talking about the teachers of the law and the Pharisees. And I just opened my Bible tonight, and that was like the story and verse that really stuck out to me um, as I was reading that, because it's so true. Like a, a lot of Christian people you will see at church or see online or just see in your group of people will look very Christian. Like they have their life figured out. They have this beautiful relationship with God and they're this beautifully kind person on the outside. But on the inside, they're full of greed and jealousy and anger and bitterness and disgust and cruelty and that's not to judge the person, but just to like, not everyone is who they say they are. And there are so many lukewarm Christians in this world who just live that way because they think that it's okay. You know, like, oh, I believe in God. And like, I'm a nice person, so I'm gonna go to heaven. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. If you knock on a door and Jesus answers, but you don't have a relationship with him, he doesn't know you, so why would he let you in? God made you, so obviously he knows He knows everything about you, but what I'm saying is it's about a personal relationship with Jesus. Oh, believing in God is like the first step. Awesome, you believe there's a God. Good. Even... Um, yeah, James says you believe in God, good, even the demons believe that and shudder, like, good, you believe there is a God, that's awesome, but there's more to that, it's about a personal relationship with God, so reading the history of this world and, like, how God worked, like, the Old Testament, reading that, you know, it's really interesting long and lengthy but interesting the stories in here and just the history of it all and then the new testament is jesus and that's incredible how god sent his only son jesus to become a human in this world and be raised by a virgin and her husband and at the right time he started his ministry and made disciples and then crucified on a cross for being truthful and saying like hey i'm the son of god and healing people on righteous days and going against the laws of moses but he's also the son of god so like hello he's superior anyways um it's just a whole awesome story of history and then he dies on the cross and then raised three days later Victorious saving us from our sins and he's in heaven right now and we'll come back to earth someday maybe soon but um yeah it's about a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God you gotta get to know him you gotta spend time with him you gotta put in some effort there you know live a life pleasing to him as well um there's a really powerful analogy my brother told me once that I'll never forget um and it's where there's this man and he's confused whether he believes in God or not so there's this one side which is heaven and one side which is hell but he's like uh you know I don't know what I want to go to I don't know what I want to follow like heaven that's beautiful but there's just so many you know I don't want to give up anything on earth but then hell like you know, I just, I love my life on earth, I love my friends, I love partying and drinking, but then again, like, I wanna, I don't wanna go there, like, I wanna be in heaven, but I just love my earthly stuff, I love, I love 
you know, the lust and the drinking and the partying and the music and the fun with that. And like, I just don't know what to pick. So why don't I just take a second? I'm going to lean against this fence and I'm just going to ponder my thoughts. I'm going to really think this through. Okay. Five minutes passed. Devil walks up to him and says, come on, you're coming with me. You chose me. Let's go over here. Let's go to hell. Let's go. You're going. He starts grabbing him and pulling him over there. And he's like, what are you doing? Like, I didn't pick any sides yet. And he's like, that's my fence. You picked my side. That's my fence. And then he goes to hell. Because there is no middle ground for us as humans, Christians, whatever it is you are believing in, there is no middle ground. There is no middle ground. It is heaven or hell. Heaven or hell. No middle ground. So being a Christian is lukewarm. That's middle ground. And that's not gonna fly when Jesus comes back. That's not gonna fly when you pass away. Following God is surrendering your life to him. Because not doing that is idolizing our life here on earth. Most of my life until like October 2022, I was a lukewarm Christian my whole life. Um, I've had dry spurts, good spurts with God, lonely spurts, depression spurts, anxiety spurts. Lots of stuff happened in my life, but um, I never fully surrendered my life to God because I was like, well, you know what? I want to do this and like, I'll just have God with me and like, he'll make it work. Like, he's going to be with me and like, if it's, you know, it'll be fine because I have God. And... I mean, obviously nothing worked out, so. I need Jesus. And it came to a point where, like, my life was in shambles. And I was like, you know what? I can't do this. I, I cannot keep doing this. I can't, I can't do this. I was not satisfied with anything I chose to do. Nothing was working out. Um, I was depressed, anxious, and over it. And just not, not, not a happy camper. Um, and I was never satisfied with anything. And that was until I gave my life to Jesus. And I was like, you know what, Lord, take it. What's the worst that's going to happen? My life was already rock bottom. And I was like, Lord, take it. I find that's the easiest time for us as people, Christians, to give our life to Jesus because we're like, you know what, my life is horrible, so do what you want, Lord. And um, I think God really uses us in our broken state to just pick us back up again. Because if you have everything, you're so happy and grateful and, you know, pleased with your life, you're not going to think that you need Jesus. But guess what? You need Jesus. And the happiness will end. And your circumstances will flee. And things will get bad again, I'm sure, at some point in your life. Because that's how life on earth works. Um, but it's with God and surrendering your life to Him. Following His plan for your life is really just where everything beautifully comes to fruition with your life. And you get closer with God. You spend more time with Him. You start you know, you're getting into your word, you're learning more about him, you're spending more time with him. Maybe you learn to study the Bible and you're just have such a beautiful sense of peace and contentment. You're satisfied and you're not afraid of the future or anything really because you just know that God's caught you. And at the end of the day, it's heaven or hell, not this earth. And I want to go to heaven. So, Jesus is the only way. And regardless of the future, I know God's caught me. And I know he's caught you. 
and it's not too late to give your life to God. I know it's scary. It's intimidating. So you're like, well, I don't want my life to change. I don't want everything to change. I like my life. I'm content. I'm comfortable. You can't grow if you're comfortable. It's not something God's going to put on me too. You know, you can't grow if you're comfortable. And sometimes it's a step out in faith. And honestly, God won't give you too much to handle. He will not give you too much to handle. He's got you every step of the way. He loves you and has your best interest in store. He really has got you and he will pick you up and help you through everything. You're not alone in this. Even though it's scary, I promise you it is worth it. God is able to do exceedingly more than we could ever ask, think, or imagine. He has beautiful plans for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope. And the future in Jeremiah 29 11. And I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. It's his air in our lungs. His vessel I'm looking at right now. Not my his vessel he made for my spirit to dwell in. Like God is all around us and this earth is gross. I don't want to belong to it. I don't want to live in it. Living my life for Jesus, glorifying him through it all makes it count because I know I'm doing what he wants me to do, being a for him. You know, I would love to start evangelizing publicly and one-on-one -on -one with people in person. Um, I'd love to start growing closer with God and studying more Bible, spending more time with him. That's something I wrote in my journal tonight, a few minutes before making this video, because so I just felt God wanted me. I really start immersing my time with him, spending more time with him, less time on my phone, more time with him in the word, journaling, listening to worship music, sermons, just immersing my day with him because I should be doing that more. And whatever things God's telling you to do, I encourage you to just give him a try. Try it. Obedience. It's pretty cool. <laughs> and worth it. And yeah. Trying to get across to you is just a, like, there is no fence. There is no middle ground when it comes to Christianity. It is either you are giving your life to God, living a full surrendered life, pleasing to him. Obviously, I have bad days. Are you kidding me? I'm a sinner. I sin. I've, not like crazy, but like... <laughs> I am not perfect. Nobody's perfect. I will mess up. I have messed up. I do mess up. Everybody does. You know, like, I, I still go through it from time to time. But what I'm meaning to say is that there is no middle ground. You live for this world or you live for God. It's a choice and it can be hard, but it is worth it to choose with God. He is the creator of the universe, the star breather, the everlasting father, and the great I am. And man, he just comes with so many beautiful perks. I mean, peace, he gives you peace that passes all understanding, joy, overflowing, unspeakable love, kindness, compassion, freedom, contentment no anger, you know, just peace, excitement, oh, he makes life so much better, so God is just so good all the time, and all the time God is good, and yeah, I just encourage you, if this is meaning anything to you, giving you any sort of encouragement or conviction, please just bring it back to God, and talk to him about it, um, no middle ground and it's heaven or hell it's God or this world and I just are you happy are you satisfied are you content are you pleased with your life if not please do just give it to God 
It's a simple prayer, it's a simple ask. He will take it. He hears you, he knows your hearts, he loves you, and he is just ah the door of your heart knocking. And um he yearns to see you and be with you and get to know you more. God loves you so much. And I just hope to, that you just choose him and cling to him and give your life to him, for him. He loves you. For you as well. It's a beautiful life he gives. And um, yeah, God loves you so much and I promise you, you will not regret giving your life to God. I promise you. You're not alone. He loves you. It's not too late. It's okay. It's okay. God bless you. Thank you for watching this video and please choose God.